Oh, right, let's have a couple little bit of a look at the news today, shall we? <coughs> you what? <coughs> So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. Today we are going to be having a look at the debacle that seems to be, I'm going to name it and dub it as such, the airport gate. And no, not Terminal 5, but please revert to gate 4. Anyway, airport, airport puns out of the way. Today we're going to be looking at the fact of uh, there was a Twitter user that had decided that he was going to make a comment about a particular Netherlands airport that was, let's be honest, doing an actual training day exercise to show that there, what would happen if there was queues and how they would actually deal with the queues. But apparently that didn't matter. Especially didn't matter to Ramona's like James O'Brien, simply because, you know, Brexit's going to Brexit, apparently. It's going to destroy everything, and you voted for this, so you deserve everything that you get out of this. Okay. Interesting. Now, on a cursory look, very, very quickly, most people, with a little bit of ounce of uh, common sense, would actually understand that we haven't actually left yet. We're in a transition period, which means that all of the laws, regulations, and passports, and everything else like that, are exactly the same. Nothing has changed, regardless even if we had the worst possible deal that was coming our way. Nothing, nothing has changed. But yet, rather than me keep on screaming and shouting about it, let me show you what James O'Brien decided that he was going to do as a news media outlet person. Somebody that actually is supposed to be talking about the news and reporting factually and correctly about the news, especially when it's something that is as important as what Brexit is, especially to the whole of the country, if not the whole of the United Kingdom as a whole. So let's watch that, shall we? There's a chap on Twitter called Colin who is getting it in the neck from pretty much every imaginable angle after posting a photograph of the queues at Schiphol Airport and complaining that this isn't the Brexit that he voted for. Now, if you credit me with any um, <laughs> sort of relevance to the Brexit debate or any role in keeping the facts front and centre as the feelings took over, then... So remember this for later. James O'Brien is deciding to let you know that he is able to separate facts from falsehoods and take away feelings away from reporting on particular news articles. Just remember that. He's actually deciding to tell you here and now, before the story even kicks off, that he, hopefully, if you can take anything away from the Brexit debate that he's been in, that he tries to separate fact from fiction and actually takes away the feelings and just puts in facts. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that. Please heed what I say to you now. Don't go off the Colin. I mean, there are elements of the story that I'm not actually persuaded by because we don't obviously lose the benefits of membership until the end of January 2021, but... but so, Mr. O'Brien, you actually know that we don't leave until 2021, so you know that the benefits don't change because we're in a transition period, so you know all of this, but yet, for some reason, you're going to pick up the story and say what you're about to say, while also putting in the caveat that, well, this may not be true, this may not happen, don't attack Colin or anything else like that, attack the people that lied to us. What are you doing here, Mr. O'Brien? What are you doing here? The Independent have picked up the story, a couple of other news organisations, a Brexiteer who was forced to wait in an immigration queue at an EU airport in Amsterdam. So, straight off the bat, not actually going to check any of his sources whatsoever. He's just going to go on what Colin said because, you know, that's apparently what the story is with people's perception of what Brexit is going to be to it actually is and the actual facts that are behind it. Because apparently James O'Brien didn't actually decide that he was going to check any of his facts. So guess what? I've done it for you because it literally took me five seconds to actually go and check. 
So very quickly, here is a screen cap as well as the link down below to the actual tweet from Schillerpool Airport from the Netherlands. Here's the quotation for the people that are listening. There have been no changes at our airport for UK travellers. New staff members were being trained yesterday, as in when Colin put down this tweet saying that he was waiting for a long period of time. Carrying on, leading to longer queues at the passport control than usual. Sadly, this tweet has taken on a laugh of its own for further reference, linking to what we're going to show you very, very shortly. And the tweet that's been taken off a laugh of its own is Colin's tweet. The one that James O'Brien's talking about. The one where he didn't even do a cursory search for the airport itself to find out what was actually going on. But no, he decided that he was going to take everything at face value because he wanted to talk about Brexit. Because remember, he wants to talk about the facts and just the facts. There is no bias here. There is no feelings here whatsoever. Because he's an arbiter of facts has complained that this isn't the Brexit I voted for, and we are all now supposed to point and laugh at Colin. Nah, mate, nah. We're not laughing at Colin, my friend. We're laughing at you, because Colin is just a normal citizen that could be wrong on so many different occasions. He might even be a troll. We don't actually know what his motives were for this. But you, you are saying that you're an arbiter of facts. You are supposed to be the one that's taking his feelings out of Brexit, but yet couldn't even be bothered to check his own facts. Well, we really shouldn't, because Colin believed people who now occupy the highest posts in the land, and there is no shame in that. Colin was told by Boris Johnson and Michael Gove, Daniel Hannan, Nigel Farage, and various other individuals that his life would improve. Yes, James O'Brien, by the fact of probably having a freer style of economy, being able to trade with people that we want to trade with, with no other regulations inside of that trade agreement, being able to trade and decide to trade with whoever we want by ourselves without including another 26 other members. Also as well, Mr O'Brien, to be able to have control of sovereignty. Now, that also means that other countries will then control their own sovereignty. So let's take, for instance, that if passport control did actually occur in the Shenyan area, then something being worse in comparison to the fact of being able to control our borders, control our trade, control our laws, to the degree of not even using any other form of foreign court system to dictate to us what we can and what we cannot do. But no, apparently this story only matters because, you know, you say that life's going to get better, but you might have to wait in a queue. And apparently, waiting in a queue is really bad and detrimental to your life. But hey, Mr O'Brien, you carry on with your facts and figures, my friend. So he's right. This is not the Brexit that he voted for, because the Brexit that he voted for never existed, and it's not his fault. I really hate the idea of people that have never met you dictating to you and deciding your methods and reasoning and rationale for why somebody else voted for something. You put in your interpretation, your idea of what people actually voted for, you're going to try and create a literal straw man of what that person may or may not have voted for to start a discussion about pure facts and leaving out feelings. You're going to start to assume why somebody voted for something and what their version of Brexit was and why they voted for something. But yet, Mr. O'Brien, you're the one who is deciding that you're going to just bring the facts. That makes sense, doesn't it? 
that he thought it might, because he would turn on reputable news sources, like the BBC or LBC. He would open newspapers that looked, to all intents and purposes, as if they were being written by professionals, with at least a modicum of honesty. He didn't realise that they were mostly written by ignoramuses and liars. Does this include you now, Mr O'Brien? as now you're quoting the fact that you are reputable news sources, as in what you said before, the BBC and the LBC. You're supposed to be this arbitration of what factual evidence is. Did you do any? Did you check the fact that what Colin actually said was even true to begin with? Did you actually even check anything before you started on this tirade? Did you check the facts of anything? with this? Did you even ask him how and why he voted Brexit? Did you even check that? Did you? No, you didn't. So does that mean that you're now a lying ignoramus? Or are you better than that, apparently? Reservations about the finer detail of the story notwithstanding. So taking a page out of Mr O'Brien's book then, what you mean is, you don't actually care about the finer points, you don't actually care about the facts, you don't actually care about what the honest opinion is, you care about your bias and you care about your feelings. Wow, that almost seems to contradict what you said at the beginning. I wonder if we can... Oh, we can, we can repeat that, can we? Now, if you credit me with any... Um <laughs> sort of relevance to the Brexit debate or any role in keeping the facts front and centre as the feelings took over, then keeping the facts front and centre as the feelings took over, keeping the facts front and centre as the feelings took over. Come January 2021, this is going to happen. And when it happens, there'll be millions and millions of Collins standing in queues, wondering why the hell their life has actually got harder. And they're probably not going to be reassured by the fact that their passport might be blue. So, Mr O'Brien, you think for a fact, you know for a fact, that these types of training day exercises, I mean, cues due to passports and Brexit, is going to happen after we actually leave. You know this for a fact, do you? Or is it dependent on negotiations that actually happen between the EU and the UK? And when people like you are pushing this false idea and this false propaganda, false fear-mongering that this is going to happen regardless, do you think that people are actually going to trade or negotiate on their terms if people are scared that these types of things are going to happen? Especially with you pushing your facts as saying that this is definitely going to happen. Do I have to play that clip for you again, buddy? Keeping the facts front and centre as the feelings took over. It, I mean, I'm very old-fashioned like this. For me, the importance of a passport is determined by the access it provides to the passport holder. To, I don't think it's even fair to lump Colin in with that lot. To a certain type of person, they are now forced to pretend that the colour of their passport is more important than the number of countries it allows you to freely access. Look, you little weasel of a man. You keep on trying to say that you're an arbiter of facts. I'm not an arbiter of facts. I have my biases, and I don't try to pretend that I'm part of the mainstream media that is impartial or supposed to be. You are supposed to be. You are trying to attribute facts and feelings to people that you don't even know if they have those types of things. What type of person do you really think cares that if they have passports, what the colour of the passport is compared to what countries it allows you to go into? And by the way, the passport itself, regardless of negotiations of Brexit, will not stop you from going to the countries. The countries themselves will decide what regulations or what entry requirements that you actually need. Some might decide none. Some might decide a visa-based system. But that would be up to the EU and how the negotiations happen. But you know, facts over feelings, I suppose, Mr O'Brien? Do I have to play the clip again? I'll give it a miss this time, mate. I feel that I've uh, played that one to death. But again, I, I don't like this. I don't, and I can't see a way to 
nip it in the bud because there's so much anger about the damage that's been done to your life that you're going to take that anger out on Colin when he realises the damage he's done to his own life. Yeah, from the person that's got so many facts and definitely not using his feelings on this one, seems to be making another assertion in apparent fact and not feelings about how everything is going to turn out regardless. Because obviously James O'Brien is a fortune teller that can actually decide what the negotiations are going to be and tell us what they're going to be and it is going to be this. Reasons why? James O'Brien says so. Facts over feelings guys, facts over feelings. But I genuinely mean this. I can probably sound a little bit sanctimonious, but I genuinely mean it. It's Wait. not his fault. There are some vile people out there who are going to carry on pretending that they voted for this, that or the other. You just can't help yourself, can you, mate? You really can't. Stop trying to attribute reasons and rhymes of why people voted the way that they did. You do not know the reasons why people voted the way that they did without actually asking them. Otherwise is to presume or to assume, and if you assume, you make an ass out of yourself. But you know, facts over feelings. Am I right? But in order to make sure that we don't get fooled again, you've got to go after the people that fooled you last time, not the people that got fooled. It's starting to really get to me, the fact that you guys, as in Ramonas, as in people like James O'Brien, actually want to try and say that because people had a different outlook, a different way of thinking when it comes to Brexit and different politics, that the people that voted differently to you were fooled. Because there's no other possibility that they could just think that there is a better way outside of Europe or so on and so forth, for whatever other reasoning or rationale that they may or may not have. But yours is that what happened is that they got completely and utterly fooled, and they were completely led down the garden path by these apparent liars to vote in a slightly different way to how you voted. Because obviously people that were fooled are so ill-educated that they were fooled and couldn't actually make a decision by themselves. Am I right, James O'Brien? Am I right? Are those still facts over feelings again? Because how could you possibly know the reasons and rationale why these people voted the way that they did? But you know, they were all fooled, which makes them all foolish. Well done, Mr. O'Brien. Well done. It's too late to change our minds about Brexit. Absolutely finished. Done with. Over. Reality is now beginning to bite. Whether you're a, an employee, a former employee of Norton Motorcycles, whether you working for Honda in Swindon, or whether you're just standing in queues that you didn't have to stand in this time last year. It's all going to happen. It's all coming home to roost, you know? No, Mr. O'Brien, I don't know. But apparently you do, because all of your opinions, I mean, all of your facts, are obviously backed up by absolute no bias whatsoever and obviously linked to any citations that you can actually provide to say that this is actually going to happen, that the negotiations are going to be so bad that we're going to have to do this everywhere. And the fact that people that actually voted for sovereignty and for other means are actually going to be bothered about standing in the queue for a little bit longer than what they would do normally. But apparently this is the crux of how bad Brexit is going to be. You might have to stand in a queue for 55 minutes, rather than just taking 10 to 15 minutes to walk through. But you know, facts over feelings guys. Facts over feelings. Remember, trust LBC, trust James O'Brien, because he's an arbiter of facts. Keeping the facts front and centre as the feelings took over. Right, so then, ladies and gentlemen, that was me talking about James O'Brien and why James O'Brien was wrong with, you know, pointing out the fact that there is an actual airport that is actually involved with this that actually had to tweet to correct the news organisations that he says that is trustworthy, i.e. the LBC, you know, him, as he's trustworthy and he's an arbiter of facts and he knows what he's talking about because he's James O'Brien, but... Hey, he obviously knows, right? That has nothing to do with the fact that he has his own biases and is actually pushing his own biases. No, nothing at all on that one whatsoever. But the real reason why I actually did this video and the reasons why you probably clicked on this, because good old Guy Hofstadter decided that he was actually going to tweet out uh, Colin Browning's tweet and actually put this down as a fact, apparently. 
And this is a statement from Guy Hofstadter. Hopefully you can see this on the screen as now. This is the result of Brexit. Not a question mark. Not trying to say that this could happen, this might happen or anything else like that. No, a categoric statement of saying this is a result of Brexit. Not will, not could, not maybe, but is. And obviously, as I've shown you already before, and I will show you again right now, the actual, <laughs> the actual airport coming out and saying, no, this is all due to a training exercise, and actually, it wouldn't actually do anything with Brexit because we're in a transition period. Now, the actual person who's supposed to be the head of negotiations between the UK and the EU supposedly on, you know, fair grounds and so on and so forth, supposedly, is coming out of his way to say, no, this is a fear-mongering tactic and this is a statement of intent from Guy Hofstadter that is actually going to be using Colin Browning's either willful ignorance or trolling tactics to actually show off how dogmatic certain groups of people are. And one would say that they begin with an R and also N in an R and kind of sounds like moaners. But I bid you too much. Coming back to the actual point of Guy Hofstadter and James O'Brien, they are actually coming out of their way to try and put this story from a tweet of a 55 minute queue of saying that this is what is going to happen with no facts to back it up, nothing else to be able to prove it, and not even checking the sources of the story in itself. Not even bothering to take the time to actually, in James O'Brien's case, phone up the actual airport and ask, is this true, did this happen, if so, why did it happen? And as for the fact of Guy Hofstadter, he should already know that this is a case of this can't happen because of Brexit, because we're in a transition period and nothing has changed. Nothing will change at least until December next year, well, the end of this year, or January next year. But hey, apparently that's all you need to know to be a trustworthy news source like LBC is take a person's tweet, their willful ignorance or trolling account, and actually say that this is gospel news and truth, and we shouldn't be trying to blame the people like Colin, who may be pushing misinformation, but we should blame the people that are actually at the top. But hey, I already went through this with you. It amazes me that the people that are at the top that push this, like Guy Hofstadter, are able and freely able to get away with pushing this fear-mongering type of tactic, of saying this is due to the result of Brexit. Sometimes you only realise what you have lost when it is too late. Well, Guy Hofstadter, it seems that your fear-mongering tactics were so inept that you actually had to delete this tweet. And I am so grateful that in my wisdom, so to speak, I was able to cap this and screen grab it. Because otherwise, people would always say that this never happened. Some people would even say now that this didn't happen and this was made by Photoshop and whatnot. I can assure you it's not. But some people are still going to go that way. I just would leave you with this last thought, ladies and gentlemen. When you've got places like LBC that have people like James O'Brien that is telling you categorically that he is an arbiter of facts, he is the one that is trying to take away all biasness away from this discussion, that he is trying to present this as an arbiter, of somebody that's in between, as somebody that doesn't have any sort of bias towards this at all. And the reason why I reiterated that is simply because of what he said in the video that I played. That he tries to do that. That's how he sees himself. But he thinks that all the rest of the people were the runs that were lying to the rest of the people. To the 17.4 million people that voted for Brexit. He thinks that the government themselves lied completely and utterly to everybody that was in the 17.4. But apparently, him himself never did any of the lying, and him himself would never do anything like lying or misleading people unknowingly, maybe in this case, being charitable. But you know, that never happened. His biasness never comes out, is never shown, and is never pushed forward, and is never called out. The reason why it's never called out? 
I'll leave that up to you to decide, ladies and gentlemen. Now again, Guy Hofstadter, the person who should know better, the person who is actually in charge of what policies are going to be negotiated, what trade arrangements are going to be negotiated, as he's the head of the negotiation team, you would think that he would know what is going on. Now, I'm pretty sure that he does know. I'm pretty sure that he does know what the terminologies are, and I'm pretty sure that he does know what the policies are. But yet, went out of his way, willfully or unwillfully or ignorantly, to post this to say categorically this is a result of Brexit. Now, from the point of the EU's perception, or perception, is a case of you have somebody that is so against the idea of Brexit that he's willing to mislead people on the idea of what is going to be the causes of Brexit and what's going to happen. And yet, never called out for it. Even after he deleted his tweet, no news organisations have called up to say that Guy Hofstadter has done this, that was able to push this, or anything else like that. Not a one single news or outlet that I have seen has commented that Guy Hofstadter got confused or called out or was using his own bias to try and push misinformation. At least. So I leave that to you, ladies and gentlemen. Please share this video or cut this video to this point of just sharing this tweet of Guy Hofstadter actually sharing this news as gospel of it being Brexit that's the problem. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, that the people that want to stay in the EU, that's the guy that's the head of negotiations on a fair and level playing field, remember. I bid you farewell, ladies and gentlemen. I bid you adieu, and I will speak to you all again real soon. Take care, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.